Good day everyone, this is Asmo here. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Asmo, obviously. Uh, I'm a beta tester, I've been playing this game for, uh, what now, since 2015, so that would be calculations of hard nine years? Nine years, yes. I've, I have 23,000 games under my belt, as you can see. About a 55% win rate, and I've been playing a lot of submarines. Uh, I started playing submarines because back in the day, submarines were announced, people were afraid, people were afraid to get another class like the carriers, uh, obs obscenely broken and still in the game. Uh, but, well, <laughs> there were some iterations, I've played them all. There were some iterations in which the submarines were overpowered, there were some iterations where they were underpowered, and I kind of think they were kind of balanced until the last patch. And now they kind of broke them the wrong way. Uh, submarines are now really comparatively pretty weak. The three kilometer thing is really, really not needed, especially with everyone suddenly being able to aim their homing, uh, sorry, their flying bombs far easier at the submarines. I don't think they need a three kilometer range problem. Also, it's very hard to kill other submarines in a submarine because you always are within three kilometers usually. So, yikes. Also, you can't defend yourself anymore. Yeah. And shotgunning still exists, because you cannot fix shotgunning. You can fix the gate hoe, but you cannot fix shotgunning. Because it's like... It's like fixing drive-by attacks with battleships, and they suddenly can't do damage when they're within 3 kilometers. Can you imagine that? Yeah, me neither. That's just stupid. Anyways, for a quick overview for the submarines I've played, for those who want to see. Uh, here are a few numbers. Uh, 27 games here. 8 games here, 37, then we go up to 845 games. Yes, I love the 251, was my favorite one. Uh, it was very good when it was still a premium to uh, to level your captains. I got over 8 or 9 captains, leveled uh, 6 to 21, all of them, uh, just on the ship alone. <laughs> it was awesome. It still gives a lot of XP. You get more XP in submarines than you get anywhere else. So if you want to level your captains for a nation, well, if you have a premium, which is a good one, then uh, by all means do so. So there's a quick overview of a few of the submarines I've played. Just for a quick st a state of reference here. And um, yeah, overall I have a 60% win rate on them. I have over 3000 games played in them. And um, I used to start this game as a Shimagaza player. I like to I like a sneaky snipey thing. I like to be sneaky, spotting for my team, torpedoing enemies. I like that kind of gameplay. And they've been nerfed. Over and over and over again. First we had radars. Then we had a whole lot of aircraft spotting. And then we have a whole lot of um, gunboats with better torpedoes and better stealth than the torpedo boats. So yeah, the, the nerfs have been real. And playing the submarines, testing them out all the time, I noticed a few things. First of all, General submarines are pretty stealthy. They're not the stealthy ships in the game. They are stealthy, and when they go to submarine uh, to uh, periscope level, they are the stealthiest. But uh, they can be. They can avoid being plane spotted, radar spotted, and hydro spotted to a certain extent, which no other stealth ship can do. And mostly, those three mechanics ruin most gameplays for a lot of stealth boats. So it's a really good thing. For, uh, that there is now a class that can actually avoid all that nonsense if they play well. Player skill, if you know when to dive and when not to dive, how to conserve your oxygen, but when to dive, you can actually use player skill again to be stealthy, which is pretty rare nowadays, especially with planes. Um, the comments of submarines, of course, they have low HP pool, so if they're on the surface, if they're surface spotting you, shoot them. If you know it's them spotting you, shoot them, because your guns will work, especially HE. Um, they've limited damage control party charges. They only got four or three or four, I believe. Depends on what submarine you play. And they're really dependent on it, because you get a 100% flooding chance when you hit your depth charges. Flooding and fire together does a lot of damage to submarines. There's only one submarine with a heal, the 451. That's the only one who can heal up a bit of HP. The rest will all die really rapidly after a few fires and floods. So, um, yeah, very limited. Of course, submarines are torpedoes only. Now, torpedoes only means two separate things. Torpedoes are slower than shells. I mean, no matter if they go out of 95 kilometer torpedoes from the Holland, they're still slower than your shells. So, you're stealthy. You're spotting an enemy. You're preparing a torpedo attack. You ping them. You get in danger because you ping them. You launch your torpedoes. Now you're on cooldown. And you wait. And then your allies kill your enemy. 
that happens a lot. Zero damage games are common with submarines because, uh, yeah, you are spotting. If your team is good, then you should do no damage. So keep that in mind. Damage numbers can be high, but most of the time they are very low. And they're relatively slow compared to other stealth ships. Most DDs out outpace submarines. Of course, in a chase, it's always hard to uh, chase someone else in this game. That's just how it works. But uh, most DDs are faster than submarines are chasing. Especially when the submarines are underwater. With the one exception, of course, the 451. And even that one is not faster than the fastest uh, DDs. Also, to get, get one big elephant out of the room. DDs in this game are not the class to hunt submarines. Let us think it. DDs in this game are not meant to hunt submarines. Because when a DD hunts a submarine, submarine spots DD before the DD spots a submarine, DD gets farmed to death before it can overtake a submarine when a submarine is kiting away. The ones who should fight submarines are the cruisers and DDs for spotting. DDs should then run away, not engage. And the battleships need to be close enough to support their submarines or DDs or whatever is spotting to bomb the living shit out of the submarine when they get in range. So BBs on the back line means that you as a submarine should not spot for your team. You should not do it because your backup, the ones that are supposed to kill the submarines, are too far away. If your BBs are near you, by all means spot for them, help them out, make sure they can see all, all the things. The hydrophone for spotting is really, really great. So, yeah, watch where your battleships are, because those are the submarine killers. Nothing else is. Some cruisers can, but they have limited range. But battleships, as, as long as they don't play too passively on the blue line, if they're kind of close and near islands and stick within a 10 kilometer radius from you, then they will murder any submarine you spot. So, yeah, submarine hunting is for battleships, not for DDs. Anyway, so let's go over the DDs themselves. Uh, this is all about building building sub the DDs themselves. <laughs> Hear me. <laughs> the submarines themselves. Yes, those at once. And uh, see what they have uh, what they have to offer. So I will go over a general build here. I will go for every separate nation build later. So this is a general build that I want to explain. Uh, let's pick this one because I have too many uh, people that are are ready for it. So uh, let's go. This is a, a general build so let's grab this guy he's empty so for most submarines you want to build um in the first line you have here enhanced sonar uh enhanced sonar reduces sonar cooldown time useful not really necessary flooding not really necessary helmsman would save your ass this one i always pick uh, the only exceptions on the i-56 Actually, yeah, on the I-56, because that's the only one with too few uh, too few hydrophones. This only works when your hydrophone is active, else it will not do anything. But then you have a better rudder shift and diving plane shift time. You dive faster and steer better. Really good. Completely useless, completely useless. Um, completely useless. This one is good. Getting fast torpedo reload, always good. It's your only armament, so use that. Um, the rest we don't need right now. Then, this is a god tier skill, Watchful. The most important skill in the whole tree, in my opinion. For an undetected submarine, it displays an indicator showing that a submarine is currently within the action range of activated enemy hydrogen search, surveillance radar, or submarine surveillance consumables. If you change depth while the indicator is displayed, you may be detected. This one shows a warning in the top here. Just like the warning you get spotted, similar to that. And if you are on a surface, you know it's submarine surveillance, because else it would simply spot you. If you are at periscope depth and you see that marker, you know it's a radar. It's the only thing that can spot you on periscope depth. If you are under, if you're deep underwater, it could only be a radar or a or a uh, hydroacoustic search, because those are two ones who cannot detect you at maximum depth. So you always know. When there's a consumer active above or below you, that will spot you if you change depth. It's a really useful skill. So this one is the first one I'll take. And then, if you want to continue the build here, fill out consumer specialists. This cooldown is the most important thing that you can get. Consumer preparation and reload time. Special preparation is important here to take that one. And then you take Superintendent. You need more consumables. That DCP is vital and life-saving. Of course, in the 451, you get a heal. Amazing. But it's all about the DCP. Bam. 
This is your starter build for every single submarine in the game. Uh, the one exception is the I-56 because he does not have submarine surveillance. This is all to keep your submarine surveillance or know when a submarine surveillance is active below you to keep submarine surveillance on par with the enemy. Just reduce the reload. Because when a submarine starts a game, they have a five minutes, five minutes, actual minutes, a quarter of the game, where they cannot use their submarine surveillance. So reducing that preparation time is vital because the first one to spot the enemy submarine is usually the one that wins. So that's the first part. Uh, then of course you can build into many other things. Uh, on most submarines, this is the build that you want to have. And beyond that, you don't need anything. AR is always nice. Um, this skill, enlarged propeller shaft, it's kind of, it depends on what submarine you play. Some submarines have a, have a pretty large, uh, I call it oxygen, I know it's better for reserve, but oxygen sounds better and it's more understandable. So a larger oxygen pool. And if you have a larger pool, uh, this skill allows you to increase the running speed on the surface and the periscope depth, also at max depth, by the way. They uh, did not change it, they did not improve it, they just changed the wording and we are wrong again. This thing has been so buggy, man. Yeah, we'll uh, increase the running speed on the surface and the periscope depth while it has less than 50% of your sub's maximum dive capacity remains. So if you're running low on oxygen, minus 50%, then you go faster. That's what this does. And it's really useful on certain submarines, but not on all. So uh, make sure to know when to use this. Um, another good option is, of course, going for consumer enhancements, just making them uh, be active longer. This is mostly useful, mostly useful on any sub that is not a standard German sub, because this improves the consumer action time of your damage control party, which is the main reason you want this. Uh, your submarine surveillance, if that has to run the full duration and you're still not done, then you're ready too late. Uh, your reserve battery unit consumer from the Germans, the best consumer for submarines in the game, is great, it's awesome, but 5% is not enough. And the heal, only this sub has that. So this skill is only for your damage control party, and the normal German subs have a 5 second activation time on their damage control party, which is the lowest of any other sub. And therefore, 5% on 5 seconds is not enough to make this skill worthwhile. Um, you could run Preventive Maintenance. And this is very nice to keep your um, sonar alive. It's not so much about your torpedo tubes staying alive. It's about your sonar staying alive. Torpedo tubes you have many of, and they each count as their own separate units. And they usually don't all break at the same time. But being able to reping someone after a DCP is vital to get all the torpedoes already sailing towards him back on target. So this is a really nice skill to take. And then, um, let's see, there is not much else that you really need on a submarine. Um, I think that Han Solo is nice. And then you have two points left. On normal build, I should build this. But on the Germans, I probably still take that. Because the rest is not worth it. This skill is a, a, a new trap. Your dive capacity goes up, but it takes longer to recharge it. You should be recharging all the time. Most of the time, if you play submarine, you try to be on the surface. If you can, you'll be on the surface to make sure that your oxygen meter is as high as possible. It's comparatively to using a smoke screen generator. If you're running out of smokes as a DD, you're screwed. If you're running out of oxygen as a submarine, you're screwed. Stay on the surface if you can. Stay on the surface. The only exception, of course, is the 451. You're fast on the water. You want to use that speed boost, but then you want to go up, refill it completely, then you speed boost again. Anyway, this is a, a pretty good build for a submarine. And spend these two wherever you want. I'll, I'll put them there. This will be a pretty good build for most submarines. And then for the submarine itself, equipment-wise, um, on every submarine, except the Germans, except this is the one exception where here... Consume action time 21 seconds. The base on only the 4501, the only German sub that has that. The other subs have this by default, but this is the only German sub that has it. 15 seconds action time on TCP means you can build into damage control party here to give you an extra 40%. I advise on every single sub except the German mainline. The German mainline probably gets uh, some modification, makes it less, makes it break less. It's good. It's the only thing you need. You don't really have paid armor to break, so no point. Your torpedoes stay a bit more alive, but you don't need that. 
you, you need your sonar. Your, your torpedoes are usually already on the way when your sonar breaks. Um, faster and better torpedoes, always good. Um, a submarine surface modification is a really great, uh, uh, really great module. And actually, it's the best one to take here. I don't know why I don't have it. But yes, <laughs> I probably forgot to take it. <laughs> Let's take it. Because this is the thing that keeps submarines alive or kills them. So you're going to lose a little bit of torpedo speed and, uh, and uh, traverse speed. But you get better submarine surveillance. It's really good. So now you have even another 20% less. What's the cool now on this thing, man? Look at the preparation time. Now you can use this before your enemy can use this submarine surveillance. And as a German sub, mostly, most German sub, not, of course, not this one, because it's an exception every rule. Um, you get a, here, 6 km radius on uh, detection of submarines. With other German subs, you get 9 km, which is insane. So, yeah, pretty good, pretty great uh, ability there. Then go for steering gears. You, you want to be able to maneuver. The biggest weakness on submarines is that they are very unable to, uh, to, 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 change course and speed they did give this uh turning radius buff of 20 percent last time which they need with all the more people that can actually bomb you properly now but nonetheless uh, it's all about rudder shift time you need to get those torpedoes on targets and you only have a very narrow arrow of attack so uh, angle of attack so use this um then of course uh, go to torpedo damage uh, if there is enough damage on your torpedoes, if you don't have no enough damage, you can always go for a consumer's modification, giving your ac action time of consumers even better, so it's even better DCPs, even better everything. So pretty good to take either of those. This one is useless. This one is new and completely useless, because when you get bombed, you don't get bombed by one guy, you get bombed by six or seven guys. So this minus 50% means you're going to die after bomb eight or nine, instead of after bomb six or seven. And there will be 20 bombs around you, so... No point. No point. And of course, torpedo damage is, is nice. Um, I think consumer is actually better here. Let's take that. Bam. And then, of course, a reload. You want to get those torpedoes uh, reload as fast as you can. They will break faster, but that's only an issue if you get spotted, which you should avoid. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, real, no real issue there. And when you get spotted, they're so close that your torpedoes don't do any damage anymore. The 3 kilometer rule, which is absolutely stupid. Let me repeat that. So, um, yeah, no, 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 no downs on this skill. And if you play well, you're so often on the surface that you don't need more dark capacity. There is no need for this. And then for flags-wise, you would want to build into... Uh, oh, I don't have this flag. And you want to reduce all the fire and flooding damage because you will be taking that. Always take ramming flag because... Uh, the fire torpedo is you, and submarines cannot damage each other at close ranges, which they usually are, besides ramming. Y you like to be the one staying alive after the ram, so ramming is always uh, advised. Uh, you, can take, uh, you can take the flooding. Uh, speed is on every single submarine good, except the I-56, in my opinion, and the Undine. Those two are just too slow to use this. And then, of course, you got um, November Foxtrot and Shara Bravo. Those are the important ones. Those are the ones you need. Once again, ship consumable preparation and reload time. And here, submarine surveillance, preparation and, re and cooldown time. Those are the only two reasons you want to have these flags on at all times. Every single submarine. Except the I-56 because he has no submarine surveillance. And I would, all I would also always take uh, Ram Speed. So those three always and the rest is you want these if you can so that's for generic builds uh, that's for every single submarine a few caveats for r56 because it's weird and uh, let's go into uh, each nation now let's so let's start with the americans the americans have a few pros and cons let's start with those for all americans they have a good hydrophone range more than most other submarines get at tier 6 it's 8 at tier 8 is 8 and at tier 10 it's 9 kilometer radius they have enhanced rudder, rudder gears consumables. Not the best consumable in the world, but they got one. Which better than others can say. And this is mediocre compared to others, to, towards the other consumable there is. I think it needs a rudder shift boost as well to dive in plane and maximum dive and send speed. A very niche use case, only when you want to dodge enemy uh, plane spotting you or to dodge and weave around homing torpedoes going for you um it's a very niche use case very niche use case i always forget to use it because there's usually no point <laughs> you most of the time don't need this so but it's there it exists 
Oh, and American submarines have both bow and stern torpedoes. It, uh, it helps you a lot when you have to fight someone and you can actually turn away and kite away and still launch torpedoes at them. And the um, Undine and the U-251, for example, cannot do this. Also, the R-56 cannot do this. So that's a, that's a pro. And the uh, Tier 8 and Tier 10 have homing air alternate torpedoes. Alternate torpedoes are, I call them, uh, heavy hitting torpedoes or non-homing torpedoes, because that's what they do. Uh, so if I use any of those words, I mean the alternate torpedoes. Uh, they do have poor detection range, pretty easily spotted. This one has, what, uh, 6.4 kilometers radius detection range. It's for a submarine pretty bad. Even for some DDs, that's bad. So, yeah. And they have a torpedo sequential reload, which means you only, learn, you only reload two torpedoes at a time, then the next set of two, then the next set of two. Which means that this um, 42 second reload here is, is, is a lie. It, it looks like 42 seconds, but no, this is actually 126 seconds to reload all your torpedoes. Yeah, that looks a lot Lost less good, right? Yes. Sequential reload is awful. It's like having a battleship only reload its first gun, then its second gun, then third gun, and then you can shoot one turret and the next turret starts. Yeah. I understand the logic in reality and nonsense, but this is an arcade game. Uh, yes. A weird decision, weird decision. Anyways, the builds generically, and let's take the maximum tier because it's easy to see. Balao here. Um, you have damage control party modification 1, because you do have 15 seconds base activation time on your damage control party. You want to extend as much as you can, because submarines are really reliant on their DCPs, make the most use out of them. Every 0.1 second counts, <laughs> so make sure this is the best you can. So you want to have damage control party modification 1, if you don't recall. So modification 1 is okay, never take this, it's not, not worth it. Uh, torpedo choose break. Uh, per torpedo tube, so if you have four torpedo tubes, all four have to break, which rarely happens. And most of the time, your sonar breaking is far more important because you only have one ping, one sonar ping. So, uh, and you want to reapply that as soon as you can. So, yeah, I, I'd go for sonar ping modification, sonar modification here. These are all bad options, none of them matter. Engine room protection. In all my 3,100 and something games and submarines, Never once did my engine or rudder break. I do not think they're modeled in submarines. I do not think they exist in submarines. So, worthless. Sonar modification 2. Sonar ping velocity plus 10%. If you have a hard time hitting your pings, this can help you. It's a crutch. It means you need more practice. Just practice young Padawan, you don't need this. This is a waste of your time. A damage control system modification 3. Fire damage and flank damage minus 5%. It's good. Because you will get set on fire, you will be flooded. But the mount is just so low that if there's any better option, it's easily far better than this. But since these two are kind of useless anyway, I'll take this. <laughs> That's why it is. Torpedo tube modification 1, if you want fast torpedoes, I'd like to have fast torpedoes. But they're already pretty fast on the ship, it's 93 knots. So I would advise getting submarine surveillance if you can. I don't have the call for it right now, so I'm, I don't do it right now, but I would recommend getting this. Submarine surveillance keeps you alive because your main enemy is usually the enemy sub. That's your biggest enemy, that's when you need to take down. And having a better submarine surveillance is the, the way to do it. So you don't need faster speed on torpedoes. Uh, they're already fast enough. And actually speed above around 90 knots actually reduces your chance of hitting because your torpedoes have a homing mechanic where they need a turning circle to turn towards the enemy. The faster you go, the easier, they, the easier it is for the torpedoes to don't have enough rudder shift to actually make a turn. So don't make a torpedoes go too fast. About 80 knots is a sweet spot. You don't have to go much further than that. So, um, yeah, for this one, I would say take Sur Submarine Surveillance Modification 1. Then, steering gears, as always, maneuverability, getting your torpedoes on target, all those things. Great. I wouldn't take this because, I mean, you do want to, you want, you want to be able to maneuver, change course, change position, make people guess where you are. Rush it helps with that far more than damage control does. Propulsion Modification, uh, I never really sit still on submarines. If you sit still on submarines, you're doing it wrong, you need to keep moving. Because if you sit still, you ping, they'll bomb your face and you're still in the same position, you'll die. So, uh, yeah, they, if you take this, you're someone who sits still, which 
Only the I-56 has a reason to. The rest never take this. So, steering gears always. And if you're not a mainline German um, ship, so you have a normal DCP with a 15 second pace, then you want to get ship consumers modification one. The damage here is not worth your time. The submarines have the have torpedoes, and torpedoes are slow compared to shells. Many times when you're spotting enemies, and you ping them, you launch torpedoes. Before torpedoes arrive, your allies would have shot the enemy and killed it. So, what you need to do is to make sure that you stay alive so you can launch more torpedoes, and some of them will make it. Uh, sometimes even break line of sight so your, so your allies cannot see it to actually get you the, the damage you want. Um, it's not very team play esque but sometimes you need to do that if you want to get some kind of damage done uh, submarines have the highest amount of zero damage games in, in in the game because torpedoes are inferior to guns because speed simple so uh, yeah I, i'd like to go for um staying alive above having seven percent more damage you either want to overwhelm the enemy with your damage and then you already have the torpedo set up for like gato i-56 or any heavying torpedo and else you have to hit them twice anyway which 7% makes no difference. So, um, no point in taking this. Reinforced Bulkhead is uh, a meme. It doesn't make any sense. And uh, when you get bombed by enemies, you get bombed by 8 or 20 of them. So, instead of dying after the 7th torpedo, you now die after the 8th torpedo. Woohoo. No point. No point. Or you still die by flooding and fires. So, <laughs> there's no point. Flooding and fires are your biggest damage sources. The damage of the bombs themselves they do hurt and do hit a lot hard but they usually are not the things that instantly kill you it's mostly fires and floods that do so no point uh so that's the equipment let's go into the captain build captain build quite simple here uh helmsman torpedo crew training get that reload off um watchful control specialist superintendent and preventive maintenance keep that uh sonar once again from going down and beyond that, um, yeah, pick what you want. I'd say AR. AR is a good one. And then you're at 19 points. You have two more points. Um, you can get a little bit better reload on your sonar. Just make the cooldown down shorter. It's nice. And then flooding would work. And then you have a pretty decent build. So that is for the Americans. Let's talk about the premium. Um, the Gato. I hate this ship. Hate. This ship is... Uh, uh, this ship is badly designed. Submarine counterplay is all based upon ping mechanics. You see the ping, you bomb it. The ping is visible on the surface, etc. etc. Um, the gate, however, only has a 6 km radius on its homing torpedoes. Homing torpedoes that go, uh, let's see, 93 knots. Sounds good, right? It's not. 93 knots means they cannot home in, they cannot turn fast enough to home in, so they will overshoot your targets within 6 kilometers. Within 3 kilometers, you do zero damage with them, so you have a 3 kilometer window to use these. And your ping only extends to 6 kilometers because it's tied to the range of your homing torpedoes. So you can only start pinging them at 6 kilometers, then they will be within 5 before the ping actually hits, within 4 before the double ping hits. You launch torpedoes and they will be within, within 3 and then they will either do no damage or they just do a little swirl and your torpedoes just go right around them because they just can't make a turn. So you do not ever want to use your ping. Though the other way to use your ping is to uh, get your DCP of an enemy. But with 6 km radius, you can't really ping without being punished for it. So you can't really take DCPs away from the enemies. So you don't want to use it either. So you don't ever want to ping in this submarine. Which is the main mechanic upon all which counterplay is based on. So what do you have left on this ship? You have the, the non-homing torpedoes, the alternative torpedoes, which hit for 22,000 damage each. You got six of these. And what do we all know? Everyone who plays DDs knows this. If you have torpedoes, you launch them. The closer you are, the higher chance of hitting, right? Yeah. So that's what you want to do with this one as well. And also on this one, the only submarine in the game that has this, still, is that the non homing torpedoes do not have any deviation on the course. They go straight ahead for 16.5 kilometers, straight ahead. Do not have any deviation to left or right. It used to be that all submarines had that mechanic, but it was deemed too powerful and it was nerfed away. 
but not on this piece of shit. So, if there's a, if there's a carrier sitting at uh, 15 kilometers away, you can launch these, all six of them, dive, unspot the carrier, carrier thinks I'm safe, and just doesn't move because carriers are dumb. And then he dies, because all six will hit. So, yeah, uh, this ship is broken. This ship is absolutely misdesigned. It needs to be around the ping mechanic. And this ship does everything to go around it. And the ping mechanic is the counterplay. This ship is poor designed, makes every other submarine looks bad. It is the reason why people are afraid of um, shotgunning. And uh, it, it ties off because people think it's all the other subs can do it. This is the only one that can effectively do it. Others can sometimes do a lot of damage with uh, shotgunning, but not even close to what this thing can do. So, um, yeah, it makes all the others look bad. And it, it, it made sure that Warhammer did the 3km rule where submarines can no longer fight each other because 3km rule. They cannot defend themselves because 3km rule. And basically all the close range engagements which were tense and exciting and you have to turn your submarine and have to hope that your torpedoes would go the right direction and the enemy wouldn't dodge at the right time and it would be tense and you could blap them when they're right next to you because ooh, close. Yeah, that, that, that whole gameplay, the whole fun part, removed. Just gone. If something gets within four kilometers, you just dive and go away. No count no counterplay, no interaction, just dive and move. Dive and move. And that's it. The whole, the whole fun gameplay there is gone. Just gone. So um yeah. Thank you, Gato. I hate you. Anyways, uh yeah. This is a broken ship. This is a broken ship. Don't take it. Oh, and most Gato players, not all, most Gato players are bad. Because that's what they are. And <laughs> and die after the first shotgun. Because they then get bombed by 15 bombs. Uh, sorry, 15 people around because they got spotted because they got too close. Yeah. It is um, it is poor design. Anyways, uh, next one. Uh, the Germans. The Germans. It's the Germans, yes. Uh, my favorite line. Uh, it's the stealthiest nation. Uh, they have a 5.7, 5.6, and 5.6 and 5.4 kilometer detection range. 5.7 on the tier 6, the all is all 5.6, with the exception of the U451, which breaks every single rule, but it's not broken. It just has all the good parts. So, yeah. Uh, Gato broken. 451, really fun to play, and not broken. Yes. Anyways, uh, they have a long range submarine surveillance, 9 km radius, which is 3 km more than any other sub gets, with the exception of the S189. So they can use submarine surveillance. And the enemy uses theirs, and the enemy can't see you, but you can see them. And the enemy dies. This is... Uh, the, the Germans are the counter submarine submarines. These are the best ones to do this in. They also have a specific code module designed for reserve best consumable. Uh, this is the only other nation line which consumable, which has the best consumable in the game for submarines. Which is extra underwater time. Oh, I'm in trouble, I need some more seconds. Here, you have 30 seconds more. It's really good, it's always useful, it's great. And then you also get a coal module specifically for this one consumable, only for the Germans. I mean, I don't mind that this exists. I think it's fine. It's just that the Americans don't get this, and the British don't even have a consumable, let alone a coal version to make it better. So yeah. Anyways, uh, really fun to use. The cons, though, they have a short duration on their damage control parties. Submarines only have a few charge of, of uh, damage control party. And they do get a 100% flood chance on a bomb hit. So they do have a lot of floods and fires because bombs also set fires. So they need their DCPs and use them wisely. Also against enemy pings. So, and also against the, uh, the, the oil slicks. There's a lot of things you want to use DCP on and you've got four charges. So you want to get an action time as long as possible and make the most out of it. But with the Germans you only get a 5 second base action time. Other subs get 15 seconds. You cannot rebuild really into action time for uh, your DCP because it's just not enough base to work off of. This is all a percentage based increase. We could do a maximum of 9 seconds with this with this buff, with this module, which is still not enough. It basically has the same problem as cruisers have, which only also have a 5 second activation time on their DCPs. Every single cruiser does this, and therefore, whenever a submarine pings, this is the cruiser. The cruise DCPs, the submarine instantly repings it because by the time the ping arrives, DCP has stopped working and they now no longer have DCP. I think personally that every single cruiser in the game needs a blanket buff where all damage control parties 
action time gets doubled on every cruiser. They need it. At least make it 10 seconds. Anyways, on the German, German submarines, so this is a downside you have to uh, play around with. Um, you get set on fire, you get flooded, you get oils above you, and you have to decide whether to use these. Use them wisely. The submarine that uses the damage control barge wisely is the one that usually wins. So, uh, but yeah, the downside of the, of the Germans is that they have a short duration, so they have to be very smart in using this. But the exception, once again, this, this thing is a ship of exceptions. Uh, the 451 is 15 seconds on it. So, yeah. This one will build into damage control party and into ship consumables because of that 15 second base. Also, he has more consumables and a heal. <laughs> it's it's not busted in this shit case, but it's it's uh, the most powerful one by far. Yeah, doesn't always mean broken. Um, anyways, uh, the alternative torpedoes on uh, the Germans are very unreliable because they're really slow. Uh, 62 knots. And they get detected from 1.9 km away. Um, I've tried shotgunning with these ships with the uh, alternative torpedoes. Uh, it almost always misses. So not really useful as a, a big damage thing. I mean, sometimes there are occasions where, but it's very rare. So you should just rely on your homing torpedoes. They're, they're not really good. The, the alternatives are pretty bad. So for the German builds, um, you, as I said, you can't build the damage control, so go for sonar modification. Keep the sonar up as, uh, as much as you can. Do take your reserve battery for unit modification, because you got this, and you got this, by all means take it. It's by far better than any of these very mediocre choices, even bad, because engine room protection, by the way, uh, does nothing on a submarine. Zero. So yeah, and this is just a, give, just a crutch, and then you have this, which is kind of useful, but eh. But this one is great, so go for this. Um, torpedo tubes modification 1 or submarine surveillance modification 1. I recommend submarine surveillance on every single German sub. My Kilometer submarine surveillance is great. Make all use of it you can. You don't need better torpedo speed. Your speed is good. Um, then, of course, steering gears. Maneuverability keeps you alive. It's better than this. And you should never sit stationary. Except in the I-56 you can sometimes, but the rest should never sit stationary. So you never should use this. You should always be moving. Torpedo modification 3 for extra torpedo damage. Because, once again, ship consumables is not worth taking. Because there's just not enough to work with. And this one is useless. When you get bombed, you get bombed by so many enemies. It doesn't really matter. This makes no difference. So, um, yeah, useless. Anyways, that's for the Germans. Let's go into the 451, which is an exception on everything. Um, it has not the 9km hydrophone, so there's not the best. But it does get a heal, which is kind of insane. Only works on surface, by the way. If you are forced to dive while it's active, and it takes a while to activate, or go to periscope depth, this stops and you lose the charge. And you've got two of these, and don't heal a lot, but for a submarine, I mean, it already looks like a lot, because you only have got 14k, so it looks like a lot, but it's not a lot. And damage control party is 15 second base, as in all the other submarines, which are not German. So uh, on this one, you do want to build into damage control party and ship consumables modification one. Uh, for flags, of course, uh, you do want to build into, because you have submarine surveillance, you want to build into the preparation time reduction. So you want to bring the by Foxtrot and Sheriff Bravo. Uh, speed is always good. Uh, the only submarines you don't take this are the Undine, it's too slow, and the I-56, it's also too slow. The rest want to take this. Uh, you all, you try, want to try to get uh, far, uh, fire extinguisher time, uh, flooding recovery time, and ramming speed. Especially now with the 3km rule, where your torpedoes don't do any damage. You do want to make sure that when the enemy rams you, because it's sometimes the only option, so you use it, final torpedo, you want to be the one to stay alive, or do enough damage that they die as well. And you can take flooding chance, not really a problem. You, uh, you, you can't detonate in a submarine. I mean, I've never seen it. In all my 3 gear games, I've never seen it, so I don't think it happens. And on this one, you might want to run in your Delta. Just a bit more healing, it's nice. So, and then we continue on to the British. I like the British, they're a lot of fun. If you see my recent um, Omaha video, this is the Omaha of submarines. It is ridiculously slow. It only goes 20 knots, maximum speed. That's maximum. And the water is even slower. It goes to, uh, what, 30 knots, I believe? 60 knots, 60 knots. Not, not that bad. Similar to the other submarines at the same tier. 
So, this ship is all about positioning. You were too slow to chase anything. Your range only 10 kilometers. Uh, you do get slightly better homing because you're British. So your homing is slightly better, not a lot, just slightly. So uh, your torpedoes are pretty good. They don't do a lot of damage, they do reload fast, so you want to launch a lot of them. Uh, but with this ship, you need to anticipate where the enemy is, you need to intercept where they're going. And already be heading that way before they go that way, because you cannot catch up. Uh, you are the stealthiest submarine at tier 6, you have 5.5 kilometer detection range. You want to use it for spotting. Uh, only torpedoes in the front, nothing in the back. So if you have to run away, you have no way of defending yourself. So be wary of that. Only limited amount of hydrophones, which is absolutely ridiculous. All the other main lines get infinite of them. You get only five. Five is okay-ish, but they only have one second action time. So yikes. You do get better cooldown time on it. But once again, yikes. It's similar to the limited DCPs on the Russian battleships. Which I think is absolutely ridiculously bad, and I don't want them. Similar to the German battle cruiser line, awful, because you need to use, make more use of it. So uh, they 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 gave you reload for limited uses, which is uh, not worth it. So yeah, but hydrophone is really really bad. That's only five uh, five charges for one second each. It's it's trash. It went from twenty second action time to five. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Calculate what kind of an earth that is. <laughs> it's insane. And they still only have five freaking charges instead of infinite. Yeah. And they don't even get a unconsumable. They don't. There's no unconsumable here. The, the Germans get a great one. The Americans get an okay-ish one. And they get nothing. Also, you have no alternative to torpedoes. There's no heavy torpedoes except for the Alliance here. Which is special. We'll talk about it later. So, um, yeah, comparatively to the Germans, it is inferior. Uh, it, it, it's definitely, they're all inferior. But let's see what's um, about them. They do have rapid reload torpedoes. Torpedoes don't do a lot of damage, but they do rapid re reload a lot. So you can send a lot of them in the water. They home better, so they have a higher chance of hitting. So you do, you do put out a lot of damage with this ship, with uh, all these ships in the British line. They are relatively stealthy. They're not as... Not as easy spot as the Americans, but they're not as stealthy as Germans. They're kind of in between there. Cons. Uh, the biggest place of variation within a nation. Dundee, as I said, is a kind of a unique ship. Because the Sturdy, the T8, is far less stealthy. It's more in line with the Americans here. But it's also far faster. It can actually move somewhere and get to flanks and do things like that. So the Sturdy is far more mobile, can do far more active role in the battle and you don't have to rely so much on intercepting your enemy it's good that you still can and he's a great teacher for that and if you use the sturdy sturdy gets better but sturdy can do a lot more because it is so mobile but it does get spotted far easier so you have to be very much more careful about your um your your surface uh detection range great torpedoes though great reloads just an all-round really fun ship and trash is more of the same loads of torpedoes in front they reload really fast uh, you are relatively fast, not the best to be consumed once again, but you do fine. I, I think Treasure is one of my favorite submarines. Uh, and Stir the Art is too, because it's just a lot of fun to use. They don't get the best mechanics, they're kind of in the middle between everything else. This irks me, but you can work with it. This irks me a lot, but there's no other option, so you know. But they do send out a lot of damage, and if you play well, you can do insane amount of damage with this thing. Uh, do note though, that this here... Is a trap this here is a noob trap don't use this gun at all ever the only time you use this if there's enemy at 90 hp or less right in front of you and you don't have to turn the turrets because the turret turns 180 degrees in 18 seconds you can't keep up with anything in within range also real time of five seconds is really awful with only one gun that only hits half of the time because of dispersion so um, don't use this gun it's terrible, case of emergency only, and then prefer ramming above shooting. <laughs> That's how this gun is. The ship is fun, the ship is great to play, torpedoes are great, but the gun is its a new trap, don't use it. And here we are at the uh, premium of the British line, the Alliance. What can I say about Alliance? Now let's have a quick look about this, shall we? There it goes. Um, we don't have an extra consumable, limited, these limited um, hydrophones as usual. Uh, six kilometer submarine surveillance, so uh, just mediocre at all things. 
Uh, nothing too special. It does move very fast, though. It's a 5.7 consumement. It's uh, pretty good. Ability, though, it's 32 knots. It's a really fast ship. The ship itself is great. You're fast, you're maneuverable, you can get to places, and it all works fine. The part where this thing stops being good is uh, the homing torpedoes. There was also a dance about these torpedoes being too powerful because they're really good homing torpedoes. They home really, really, really good. And they're basically dodgeable. But there's a big but. Biggest buts of the world. Look at this. Torpedo speed. 44 knots. Let me repeat that, please. 44 knots. These are worse than sea mines. You know the black? The sea mines we laugh about? These are worse. Yeah. At only a 10 kilometer radius. So, the action, the, the actual uh, range we use these at, you have to ping the enemy, you have to launch torpedoes, you have to launch them 3 minutes in advance, and prepare for their this, departure with launch boxes. And then, of course, set them off and, and they have to come back to get the lunchbox because they forgot them. And then they go to start doing something. So your action radius to use these things is about 6 kilometers. Ah, 6 kilometers. Sounds familiar, right? It does. 3 kilometers away, they don't do any damage because absolute nonsense. So these things, you launch them at 10 kilometer. They do reload fast, so you can launch three sets in the water easily. But by, by the time you get to it, because you have to give, uh, yeah, you have to give a whole galaxy-wide space of uh, of lead to those things. <laughs> you want to ping as late as possible, so people don't disengage before they get close, because people can easily outrun these things. And they basically never hit because they're so easily dodged, because they simply don't have range or speed. So uh, if you need to get yourself a submarine get the free ones of the Germans, they're way better. This thing... This thing is a mistake. This thing is for idiots! And I'll be the idiot so you don't have to. Do not ever get the ship for money. It is not worth your investment. It looks cool, and that's all this. <laughs> it doesn't look cool. Beyond that, it's awful. It's absolutely trash. Don't take the ship at all. Avoid at all costs. That's how bad it is. Because these torpedoes hit nothing. Zero damage games all the way with this thing. It's awful, but there is worse. <laughs> there is worse. Then we go into the two ships with uh, no real nation line behind them. The I-56, which I think is really fun to play. But it's not a submarine. It's a destroyer. <laughs> and a poor one of that. It's more like a cruiser, actually. It has the worst detection range of any submarine. 7.1 kilometer radius. It has heavy and glorious auto torpedoes. It's basically, it's basically the Gato without good concealment, without good speed, without good underwater time, and without any kind of submarine counterplay. You have no submarine surveillance on this thing, and only two, yes, two hydrophones of each one second. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. It does get, like the Gato, the long range, 12.5 km range, torpedoes, 17k each. They go an okay speed, they hit hard, and they do the single line thing where they just don't um, divert from the course. They don't have any uh, dispersion mechanics in them. So they do a straight line, but you get spotted from 7.1 km away, so that's kind of easy. Enemy submarines will easily detect you underwater while you can't even detect them at all. You also get outspotted by enemy submarines and DDs easily, sometimes even cruisers. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> the ship is... Uh... Also, also, it moves with the grace and speed of your average glacier and is about the same size. This thing is massive and doesn't move at all. It takes an age to dive or submerge. So if this plane's coming in with another submarine, you could have dived in time. With this one, uh, you're still easily spotted. Also, your detection range is, what, three kilometers at the surface? Yeah, three kilometers when you have periscope depth, so uh, yikes. <laughs> Compared to other stuff, we have 2.1. Yikes. So this thing is, is meant to um, go towards islands, stay on the surface all times, go towards islands, go to periscope depth, sneak up, just, uh, un unload your torpedoes, hope it dies because you cannot really get out to disengage. You have to one-shot kill with this thing. That's how it's supposed to work. But it has one cool thing. 
is the most glorious gun in the back of all submarines. This thing can be used as a gunboat, it does not set fires, it is not as damaging as a gunboat, but it can do decent damage with the gun. Turret reverse is good, reload is good, the artillery is really fun to use. But only in the back, so you have to get back turn towards the enemy, and you're not that fast, so use islands, shoot over them, use that a lot. And when you can go into the uh, periscope depth, sneak forward, blap thing, do that. This thing is made for shotgunning, and that's all it can do. <laughs> That's all it can do. It's really fun to play. I recommend getting this one if you want a fun gameplay mechanic. But it can get frustrating because your detection range is just so goddamn awful. It's basically Paolo Emilio. Yes. So this one is not... The, the not broken Gato is this thing. And the gun is really fun to use. So, yeah. Recommend this one. It's fun. But don't expect to be playing actual submarine things. Um, Build-wise, we're building into damage control party since you still only have 4 charges and you have 15 seconds uh, activation time. Reserve best for units because simply the best out of the bad options. And I mean, 30 seconds can help. Well, actually it's 30%, so not even... It's 6 seconds. Maybe not. Maybe go for damage control. Yeah, let, let's go damage control here. Let's just say, nope. <laughs> uh, I want to get that thing back though. Yes. Yeah, it's better. It's just simply better, because 6 seconds is not enough. <laughs> Wait, still 6 seconds? Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah. So it doesn't show that in port. Cool to know. Anyways, um, torpedoes are your main thing, and they don't go super fast in this one. And you're only you're reliant upon your torpedoes only, so go for torpedo choose modification. Get that speed on, because your torpedoes have to travel non-homing for a longer, long range. And then you need them a lot, so reload on that. As steering gears, this thing moves like a boss. Steering gears you need, diving plane shift you need, and even then you're still glacially slow, but it's at least better. Torpedo modification 3. Uh, this thing is all about getting the, the alpha strike off, and that's all you are about, so make sure you kill any battleship you have instantly. That's what you need to do with this thing. So um, yeah, there's that build. And the captain itself... Uh, don't take this. It's a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. I only got two charges of of uh, hydrophone. So this is a mistake. <laughs> you do want to go probably into an our sonar skill. Uh, reload for torpedoes. You do want to have a watchful for the times you are underwater. Uh, more DCPs is always necessary. Uh, AR. And then you still have six, seven points left. Um... This is no point because your your underwater time is just too limited for this to be useful. Um, no point because you don't have enough. Uh, absolutely no point is about homing. Your homing torpedo is awful. Uh, this only works with homing, which is awful. So none of these are useful. Um, reload time. Meh, not really need. Soda man, you don't use that. S enhanced impulse generator, sona pink velocity, you don't use that. Uh, so, tier 4, useless. Tier 3, you could use this, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. No point, no point, no point. You can use this, preventive maintenance, to keep your torpedo tubes from breaking a bit. That's okay. Not great, it still doesn't really matter. No use. <laughs> no use. <laughs> there, are, there are no other skills you want to use. <laughs> Sona ping, no use. Then the liquidator is good. Liquidator is good. So there's a lot of skills you don't want to use because it just doesn't have any effect on the ship at all. Yeah. <laughs> 56. It's already and built, basically. You just want to get this and that's it. Uh, this one. Okay, these two. These two. I'll solve for these two. Three points. And then uh, 17 level and the rest you don't need. Yikes. <laughs> just There's no not a lot of things for this ship to use. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's kind of weird. That was kind of weird, man. Then the S-189. The final submarine. Um, the S-189. What can I say about this? It was sold as a submarine hunter. And it does have 9 km of submarine surveillance. And a 69 second consumer action time, which is very nice. But um, it only has 4 torpedoes in the front. With a 61 second reload, which is way too much. 
and a 5k damage, which is the lowest in the game besides Alliance's torpedoes. You want to buy the ship after you've bought Alliance, and you never want to buy Alliance, because the Alliance is absolutely horrible and trash. Uh, this ship is absolutely horrible. Uh, the torpedoes... Well, let's start with the pros. Let's start with the pros. He has some pros. The long range surveillance he got, 9 km. Medium range hydrophone is slightly better than, than the Germans, slightly worse than the Americans. The second stealthy submarines, apart from the U4501 and the Undine, with 5.5km uh, detection range, similar to Undine. But in the cons, and it's a few bad cons, it is tied with the Alliance as the lowest damage torpedoes in the game for submarines. Limited amount of torpedoes, only four in front, where others have six or eight. And torpedo really is awful. And then also, torpedoes only go for nine kilometers, the homing, which is once again awful. Uh, so, you're not good at submarine hunting. You're not good at, because your torpedoes, even if you hit all four of them, won't kill the enemy submarine. It's not enough damage. Then, you can't do enough damage to anything else. You can use alternate torpedoes, I guess, but. I mean, they're okay, but your whole submarine hunting role is kind of poop. Your homing torpedoes are bad. You can't get DCPs of enemies too easily because you have to get within 9 kilometers. Uh, this ship, because of the torpedoes and the reload on torpedoes mostly, the amount of damage you put into water is just not enough to catch up with any other submarine. Take a German submarine if you want to go for um, submarine hunting because this thing is not it. It is... The least fun submarine to play with the worst results, it's just don't do it. Don't you do it? <laughs> Resist the urge, don't do it. That's 189. An awful ship. Anyways, these are all submarines in the game. Talked about all the pros, their cons, their builds, uh, both equipment and captain wise. If you have any more questions or uh, remarks, then let me know in the comments. Of course, it's just my opinion. If you have a different opinion, let me know. And give me a good reason why your opinion is different. And I can be convinced, you know. If you have a good argument, why not? I'd like to know. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. It's a bit different from what I usually do. But I was requested to get some submarine games out and to let people uh, know the builds. Because people just have a hard time making good builds for submarines. So, you have a complete list for patch 13.3 at uh, 14th of April 2024, for those who want to know. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked it. Like, comment, subscribe, all the things. <laughs> you know? Let me know. Let me know. And also, let me know what you like. Let me know how you what you enjoy. I love that I can dodge torpedo spotting. That's the biggest deal why I play submarines. Because I don't have to deal with fucking playing spotting. And with that bombshell, I'm gonna let you off. Goodbye.